Welcome to the Six Sigma Black Belt Training Program. As we all know, Six Sigma is the most commonly methodology used, implemented across the globe. It is one of the most important methodology which is used for solving business, customer, and regulatory compliant related problems. Six Sigma Black Belt is the advanced version of the Green Belt Training. In Black Belt Training, we tend to cover the DMAC methodology, wherein we focus on what is Six Sigma, what is the measure of central tendency, wherein we focus on what to measure, uh, what is sampling, the confidence level, and the confidence interval. We also focus on the measurement system analysis, which is gauge RNR and attribute agreement analysis. In the analyze phase, the most important aspect is the hypothesis testing wherein we focus on all the commonly used statistical tools along with the hypothesis testing which help us to get to the root cause and test like correlation, regression, chi-square and others uh, and also focus on the quality tools as well. So we use extensively the mini tab which is the statistical software. In the improve phase, we focus on the risk management tools like FMEAs, scan chart, box plot, etc. And in the control phase, the focus is on the mini tab as well as the control charts. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, I would not cover uh, all these details one by one because it would not come as a, as a phase, but I just want to show it to you that uh, we have uh, around uh, 100, 7 or 108 line items here, so don't worry about too many things here, but the intent is that, uh, you know, we are going to cover each and everything which is part of a Black Belt program, so uh, wherein uh, it covers all the phases that we have, it covers the mini tab exercise in terms of the statistical test like correlation, regression, uh, it also talk about uh, the seven QC tools that we have. Most of you are already GB trained, so you have already gone through it. Um, but one thing is for sure, uh, friends, that I would expect that you have not gone through anything. I would like to start from the scratch. Uh, because that's what that's what the, this program is all about. So I will I would be at my own speed because there are few participants who have not gone through any sort of training. Uh, they have just heard of it. So that's why this program is for 28 hours. If uh, that's the reason, so we would cover each and everything. Um, so uh, in the improve phase, on the likes of FMEA, on the likes of design of experiment, these are the topics that that are there in the black belt. We are going to have. Uh, we would have control charts as well. Somebody was talking about lean also, so we have lean as well, which is which is to be covered, uh, wherein we, we cover some of the uh, basic concepts of lean, pie-wise, ten words, and then we have the. Uh, I would I would share dummy some dummy case studies or some some of the case studies that has been completed. Though I would not share the name of the vendor or name of the organization because of some confidentiality, uh, but I would share uh, uh, the case study to uh, help you understand ki a project kaisa dikhta hai, matlab pura DMX cycle mein and uh, from the final control, how does the project uh, covers, what are the things that we have in project. So, uh, and during the project, I would try to cover uh, the project management piece as well, so that it will, it not only covers that what is a training, and you should also keep your project management hats open, so that when I'm studying, you can understand that you project, what are the things that you need to keep in mind? So I will cover that piece as well while training. This is a table of content uh, for uh, for defined till control. So let me just come start with our black belt training. Uh, so today we have spent half an hour on it uh, just for introduction piece. Uh, uh, very very important. Uh, next time we will when we start from seven o'clock uh, we will straight away start with uh, a kind of a refresher. Uh, when I ask questions, and then we'll move it, move start with the training. So, welcome to the Lean Six Sigma Black Belt training. There are certain ground rules which I need not to explain to you. You all are very sound professionals. Uh, everybody should participate. Uh, please ensure that your cell phones are on silent uh, so that anybody. I've also done it for myself as well. Uh, we will start and stop on time so that uh, we should be able to give uh, time for our personal commitments as well. Uh, please enjoy the learning. Uh, don't take it very, very complicated uh, because if you take it complicated, then it's a little difficult for you to understand. So really enjoy it while doing it. And uh, again and again, I'm saying that please participate. Um, so these are some of the roles and responsibilities of myself and yours. So just glance over it. We will have certain things to start with. Uh, we will we'll talk about what is quality, uh, six as an overview, uh, 
uh, what is sigma and what is six sigma. Uh, there are different methodologies used in six sigma, like DMAC, DMA, DV, and DFSS. Uh, uh, we will also cover basic stats, which is very, very important because in the black belt training, uh, we're going to have, so we need to understand those basic concepts. That's the reason we have basic stats. Uh, we will have normality concept as well. Uh, the process capability, uh, ways to commence a project. And we have defined, measure, analyze, improve, and control. So these are the uh, very high level detail that we have mentioned here. Uh, this is uh, this is very, very high level, but the thing which I've shown you in the Excel, the table of content, that, that is something which we are aiming at. What is quality? Uh, what comes to your mind when I say quality? Anybody? Uh, you meet what was required to be produced. Okay. Absolutely. Wonderful. So quality is something when it is uh, required to be produced or required to be delivered. Uh, it is basically uh, meeting the customer requirements, specifications to ensure that uh, our customer is really delighted at the end of the day. So uh, any features of any product which are capable of satisfying customer need, as you said. Uh, one very important thing about quality is that our customer our competitors uh, are always looking for doing the first right thing at, at one point in time. So nobody wants to call again. Nobody wants to uh, do those things again and again. So because of the because of the competitive world environment, so quality also talks about giving the customer right first time so that uh, you should get this uh, this heart and or dissatisfied. Uh, who all have heard of uh, American Society of Quality? Have you ever heard of this organization? ASQ. Yeah. ASQ. So ASQ is the world number one organization for quality because uh, they've been doing this practice for a long time and they also believe uh, that uh, anything which can satisfy customer stated and unstated needs is something which is called quality. So it is not that what customers are saying, it is something which customers are not saying also. So we need to identify that as well. And if we are able to fulfill that, that's what they follow as quality. Uh, there is a mathematical equation of quality also. Okay. Uh, if you if I if I share it, you will understand what I'm talking about. Quality is always performance divided by expectation. Okay. If my performance is better than expectation, what do you think would happen? It's a delight. Delight, absolutely. So if my quality is equal to one, which means I'm meeting the customer requirement. But if my quality is greater than one, which means if my expectation, customer expectation says other, I have performed, then in that case, my quality becomes more than one or more than 100%. So that's what is quality all about. Okay, so which which always focuses on giving them what my customers looking for. Okay, so this is just a normal theory that we were just talking about. There are certain dimensions of quality. When I talk about dimensions, which means these are the criteria which needs to be fulfilled, then only I would call a product or service as a quality product. First is a performance because everybody looks for a performance nowadays. Everybody looks for a features uh, because if they're not getting features, they will not be satisfied. Reliability. Uh, for example, if you go and buy an air condition, uh, for example, you go and buy Whirlpool or Hitachi air condition, uh, your, you as a customer would also be intended to ensure that how long it's going to survive. So durability, reliability is really, really important. The life of the product. Serviceability is very, very important uh, because, uh, and you be, you you all are aware that Amazon was a, was a lead, lead uh, e-commerce uh, business. You must have seen their advertisement is on cancellation say that we give 100% cancellation on time. In that particular advertisement, they are not promoting their product. They're only talking about that we focus on service building. If you take an example of Make My Trip also, they focus on that also. So that is also what customer attract that even though if the customer is not satisfied, even though he's facing a trouble, we would be able to give him the, what he's looking for on time with speed. Okay. One very important thing which, which is nowadays is that our customers, so for example, I'm part of healthcare, okay, and uh, or I'm part of an insurance sector, if any customer walks into the branch and say that I want to change my address and I tell my customer, sir, it will take seven days. Nowadays, my customer is not comparing with me the insurance provider, which says, sir, HDFC does it in three days. Why are you taking seven days? He's comparing us with different industries. Sir, pizza to 30 minutes to deliver. Ho jata hai. Sir, uh, Amazon to same day refund. Kar deta hai. Why are you taking a lot of time? So nowadays, the customer demand is that they are not comparing it with industry. They're comparing it to different outside industries also. So that's why it is. Uh, to understand the stated and unstated needs of the customer. Why I'm sharing this with all of you is uh, because you must be thinking already. we already know that. I'm just trying to create that kind of a platform so that when we, when we transition to Six Sigma, we, we will be able to understand that why I'm talking about all these things. Okay, So that's why, that's why it is quality is very, very important uh, uh, nowadays. And all these projects, uh, Six Sigma, 
Prima project focuses on improving customer quality only, uh, which we will discuss further. Okay. So, any question anybody has so far? Though I haven't uh, discovered or talked about anything which you were not aware of, but uh, I would be happy if anybody has any perspective or any question. Uh, no question, uh, simply, but yes, I am. Uh, I I'll appreciate uh, you starting from the scratch. So this is surely going to be helpful. You're welcome. Definitely. So uh, uh, we will talk about meaning of sigma uh, first, and then see that uh, what is it. Uh, the term sigma is used to show the distribution or spread about. We will we will talk about what is mean. We will talk about what is spread in detail in the upcoming slide. But just for now, remember that sigma is something which is used to talk about uh, that what is the overall distribution uh, from the mean, which means how am I performing from the average? Okay. So for example, uh, if I talk about sales example here, okay, if my if my average sales is uh 1 million uh, per quarter okay and in a given month that is my average sale in a quarter which is 1 million but in a month i have got either 3 lakh then 2 lakh or maybe 75 uh, lakhs or thousands so that is a spread okay so sigma is how far i am from them a uh, sigma is a symbol which shows the degree of variation which is also called as standard deviation so we will discuss standard deviation in detail i'll also cover the hands on exercises as well where you will be able to understand and i will share this presentation this training presentation with you also because uh, the lms that which you have access to that contains a lot of information but the presentation that you are looking at on your screen uh, is something which is being designed uh, to make sure that if somebody has attended the training he doesn't have to refer anything else so this training presentation itself would cover a lot of things but which i'll share it with all of you so but still if you want to make notes uh, I'm, I'm perfectly okay. So that was sigma. Okay. Now we will talk about what is six. So this is a normal history about six sigma, and uh, which you all should know because this is something. It's a it's a very interesting story. I'm not sure whether you have heard whether you have heard or not. You all know that six sigma was developed by Bill Smith. Uh, he's known as father of six sigma, and uh, the first company who started six sigma was Motorola. Started in 1987. And this is the first company who, who gave a methodology which is called Six Sigma. Prior to that, there were a lot of problem-solving methodologies which are being used to resolve issues. Uh, but but Motorola came up with a Six Sigma kind of a methodology. When Motorola implemented Six Sigma, these are some. some expect result from six sigma uh, so i have designed this slide to make you understand that what sort of problems what sort of issues can be resolved using six sigma earlier i talked about different different companies different different functions uh, but now i am focusing on that after completion the six sigma project or six sigma initiative six sigma improvement opportunity what sort of results or outcome we can expect so we can definitely improve customer satisfaction. We can do projects on improving CSAT. We can improve project on NPS. I hope everybody has heard of NPS, Net Promoter Score, which means uh, yes, when, yes. yeah, no, uh, which is, no, okay, no okay. NPS is a very very simple thing which we are which we are also experiencing nowadays, which is Net Promoter Score, uh, wherein we have uh, the customer uh, where the customer or the consumer is being uh, sent a survey or a message asking whether or would you like to recommend. Amazon or Flip, Flipkart or Netflix, anything, any service to your friends and family. Okay, so there is a rating uh, start from zero to ten. So if you are between zero to six, you are a detractor, which means you are very unhappy with the service. You would not recommend your friends and family to, let's say, uh, Amazon. Okay, if you are between uh, seven and eight, you are a passive customer, wherein it is it doesn't matter, it doesn't care. You are kind of satisfied, but you don't want to recommend anybody. Okay. If you give a rating of nine to ten, uh, which means you are a very loyal customer, you would recommend all your friends, your loved ones, and family ones to go and tell them, go and use the service. Okay, so it's a very very critical metric in mostly all the organization nowadays because that's how they measure it. That what is the customer loyalty in terms of different different providers, and uh, this is to be done using question calls. This is to be done using SMS and. We as a consumer also receive a lot of SMS. Like if you use a Matto or Swiggy or any other service, we also receive a message. So that is what NPS is. So with the help of Six Sigma, we can do projects on improving the CSAT or improving the NPS, which is called as Net Promoter Score. So if this metric is not there in your organization, 
go for it it explore it and uh, many of the organization are already using it you can try for it and get it implemented or any organization then the second is the reduce the cycle time uh, which is the uh, time which is taken to reduce a service or a good so that is those are the project because this is very very impacting to the customer increase productivity uh, which is very very important one thing one thing uh, means uh, you, you mean to say mostly used by e-commerce type of, uh, e- e-commerce uh, function okay. N- not necessarily uh, uh, this is to be used for e-commerce uh, uh, any so, uh, simply please let's just uh, help answer the yeah. question please and, please uh, so i think you know even uh, henry harwin let's say we are having a training with this any kind of training industry as well uh, they also conduct this kind of uh, survey where they want to see the customer satisfaction uh, level so they also has such certain questionnaires which actually help them improve on the quality so not just one industry like uh, e-commerce it is actually applicable for even a parlor or even a hospital yeah so then who really like to give my feedback after every service wherever i go and take so that i think that uh, helps the company to you know improve further and uh, satisfy more customers like that. yes yes absolutely very well said uh, it, it it is not only applicable to any sort of industry any company any organization as uh, as mentioned uh, by ratna that uh, it can be applied to any sort of industry uh, it is just we need to f- implement that kind of a metric in the organization and uh, get it done uh, but just to tell you just to tell you uh, the benefit is the benefit is only when it is to be done by a third party if in the same organization i do an nps there are there are some associations i just name one of them there is an organization called you can google it also i am rb i stand for uh, india m stand for mike r stand for romeo and b stand for uh, bombay i am rb kantar that's a name this is an organization who is a third party jinka kaam hi yahi hai who does the surveys who does the nps who does the customer satisfaction on behalf of uh, the different different companies okay they never say that you know uh, we are a third party but because in that case the customer would not be very very uh, uh, customer would be reluctant to share the information but if any company want to do an nps uh, this should be done by third party to ensure that there's no biasness there's no bias uh, and to to ensure that they are providing the right information so so that's what uh, we can strive for um, moving ahead uh, increase productivity also uh, you can do a lot of productivity sort of initiative you can lead that you can improve that because that would that would yield a lot of cost optimization and improve the uh, revenue of the organization because the more productive we are the more revenue would be able to uh, the more billing that we can the more invoices that the company can generate easily and get revenue out of it so productivity i would also um, help you understand how to do the cost benefit analysis also because any six sigma project and every six sigma project would definitely have some kind of a dollar benefit if you are not coming with the dollar benefit we would not call it as a strong problem solving project that has been done but there are always exceptions that where we cannot do but in 90% and more of the cases we would be able to come up with the um, benefit quantification that how much cost save how much cost avoidance how much revenue that we have generated so that uh, we would call it as a uh, it is not that the metric improvement it is also the benefit quantification then uh, the list that i've got uh, reduce the total defects errors okay uh, that is to be done we can improve that this is very very important and uh, which is which most of the organizations are facing which is called work in progress whip whip is something which is a pain for each and every organization especially the organization which i have worked for which i have consulted for every organization says uh, we start with the process we start with the uh, good but uh, it is not being sent to the customer it is still in whip so so you can also lead an opportunity to work on the work in progress improve process Process flows reduce the non-value added activities uh, uh, by going through the process and understanding what are those value added and non-value added. So you can also identify opportunities from there also. Okay, so this is something which are the expected results from Six Sigma, uh, which and this is uh, not an exhaustive list. There are many more, and you go back, look in your organization, and see what is that. important metric and just to tell you since uh, we have 1 minute left for the dinner break i i same projects are to be done on the high impact opportunity which is very very critical for the organization we should be part of your cxos or or ceos goal sheet or the scorecard if that is not relevant for him or her no matter what how strong your project is how strong your solution is how strong your team is if you don't get a strong leadership buy in uh, we will never be able to expect these results so six sigma project is to be done on the prime most 
improvement which the company organization wants to go for it shouldn't be done on a small initiative if you want to go for a small initiative you don't want to do a six sigma project and you're doing the project only because you want to come up with something very disruptive or significant kind of a kind of a work so so that's what uh, that that's why the six sigma projects are being done and therefore it requires a lot of statistical analysis a lot of analysis to be done using different different things and techniques okay so uh, any question anybody has uh, before we take a break for you okay, know so there's an exercise uh, <clears throat> there's an exercise for all of you uh, uh, in the next training uh, i would expect uh, from uh, all of you to come up with some sort of improvement just name of those improvement opportunities in your respective organizations uh, which are, which are very very critical to the organization and then i would like to hear from you that uh, then we probably will make a story out of it and we'll 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 uh, make a list and we'll keep on discussing those opportunities uh, with this forum and ask each other the questions and all So, uh, likewise, you can see on the screen the big opportunities like customer satisfaction, cycle time, improving productivity. I want to hear from you that what are the critical business challenges your organization is facing? Uh, just the name of it, uh, and we'll we'll talk about them also. So, do you think it's a good idea so that we'll be able to relate to what we're doing? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That will work. So, so, just come up with uh, at least two, uh, and see that uh, how we can. and just get some perspective about it as well uh that what is the meaning of that particular opportunity so that if i ask you a question uh, you probably would be able to explain it explain it that what sort of problem is that not in terms of data in that kind of a study that i'm asking just the opportunity and kind of a impact as well okay so that that would help you to identify certain projects also 